we are asked to perform the indicated operation. Here we have the fifth root of 16x squared times the fifth root of 2x to the third. Because the index is the same, we can multiply. To multiply radicals, we multiply the radicands together, which means this is equal to the fifth root of 16x squared times 2x cubed. And 16x squared times 2x cubed is equal to 32x to the fifth. This is equal to the fifth root of 32x to the fifth. And now to simplify, because the index is five, we look for factors raised to the fifth power. And the prime factorization of 32 is equal to five factors of two. And therefore we can write this as the fifth root of two to the fifth times x to the fifth. So notice how we have two factors raised to the fifth power. The fifth root of two to the fifth will simplify to one factor of two. And the fifth root of x to the fifth will simplify to one factor of x. This simplifies perfectly to just two x. Let's look at our second example. Here we have the fourth root of four x cubed y squared times the fourth root of x y squared. Again, because the index is the same, we can multiply. This is equal to the fourth root of four x cubed y squared times four x y squared. Well, four times four is equal to 16. X to the third times x, or x to the first is equal to x to the fourth. And y to the second times y to the second is equal to y to the fourth. And now to simplify, because the index is four, we are looking for factors raised to the fourth power. And the prime factorization of 16 is equal to four factors of two. And therefore, this is equal to the fourth root of two to the fourth times x to the fourth times y to the fourth. Notice how we have three factors raised to the fourth power. The fourth root of two to the fourth will simplify to one factor of two. The fourth root of x to the fourth will simplify to one factor of x. And the fourth root of y to the fourth simplifies to one factor of y. The radical expression simplifies perfectly to two xy. But there is one more thing I do want to mention about this problem. Notice how we are told here that x and y are both greater than or equal to zero, because notice for this problem, the index is even. Whenever we're simplifying a radical with an even index, if the simplified part has a variable raised to an odd power, we would need to include that in an absolute value because when simplifying a radical with an even index, the result must always be positive. So if we weren't told that x and y were non-negative, we would need x and y in an absolute value because both x and y have an exponent of one, which is odd. We never have to worry about an absolute value though when the index is odd. It's only when it's even and the simplified part has a variable raised to an odd power. I hope you found this helpful.